Hi, I'm George and welcome to the Cellar Door New Zealand. I've just stepped off the ferry from Wellington and arrived in Picton, gateway to Marlborough, home of Sauvignon Blanc and a whole lot more. After one of our many epic drives from Hawke's Bay to Wellington, it was time to catch the Inter-Islander Ferry and head to New Zealand's South Island. The Inter-Islander Ferry has been sailing the Cook Strait for over 50 years and this scenic journey is now considered an iconic New Zealand experience. With the stunning Marlborough Sounds to the north, Marlborough is New Zealand's largest wine growing region, world famous for Sauvignon Blanc. The unique combination of diverse soils, crisp nights and sunny days have made Marlborough's vibrant and aromatic wines famed worldwide. I'm starting my tour of the area at the closest winery to Blenheim Town Centre, Lawson's Dry Hills, situated by the spectacular hills for which it's named. Hello Belinda. Hi George. <laughs> so we're at Lawson's Dry Hills, mm -hmm. it's where you are the group marketing manager. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Tell us a little bit about what that job entails. Well that job entails looking after the brand of Lawson's Dry Hills and it entails looking after our markets both here in New Zealand and overseas. Mm -hmm. Busy job. Yeah I bet. Mm -hmm. uh, and you've got your newest launch here? Yes, this is our new wine. This is Pink Pinot, it's 100% Pinot Noir and it's quite a departure for us. We were quite a, a traditional winery in the sense that our brand stands for a lot of the traditional wine cues people expect. Um, but with the rosé popularity we really wanted to step into that with something a little bit more Instagrammable, <laughs> something a little more hip yeah. um, and we really felt that by putting something new out made by Lawson's Dry Hells it kind of had that underlying oh it's made by Lawson's so hopefully people think well it's got to be good mm -hmm. um, um, but also it's something really different for us as a brand giving us a real sort of injection of innovation out there in the market so this Gorgeous is pink. label. Would you like a taste? Ah uh, yes please. <laughs> good, good. So as with all our wines it's sealed with a screw cap so I'm going to show you a nifty way to open a screw cap bottle so when okay. we first introduced screw caps, we were the first back in 2001, but a lot of the sommeliers got a bit upset because they were very used to that getting the cork screw yeah. and, you know, doing the whole, <laughs> the whole show. So we kind of agreed with them that when someone's trying to open a bottle like that, the lugs can be quite tight, the torque's quite high, so it can be quite difficult. So what we do is we say, hold the caps, you'll knot the cap, mm -hmm. and then just twist the bottle towards you and you get that click. And that means the lugs are broken and then all you have to do is pull that off. There we go. So this is, this pin is entirely Pinot. Entirely Pinot Noir from mm. our coastal site in the Wairau Valley. And uh, yeah, cheers. Cheers indeed. It smells delicious. Mm. We actually um, brought in some yeast from the south of France to make this wine. Oh really? So very much along the lines of the, the mm. Provencal Southern French style. Mm -hmm. And it just lifts that berry cherry fruit that's really obvious. Mm. Mm. It's got yeah, beautiful savoury yeah. tone to it. Got a nice dry finish so it's not a sort of a sweet um, style, it's got structure. Mm. Rosé is such a big category now, mm. everybody's increased their ranging of rosé, everybody's making rosé so it's incredibly competitive. Mm. I guess the key thing for us is that we're trying to make this about the occasion, it's about friends, it's about something nice to eat, it's about great conversation. This is about the customer and how they enjoy it, the wine lover sitting down on a Friday night or after you know a hard day's work and just being able to relax and enjoy a great glass of wine. Mm. Now that I've wet my palate, it's time to delve deeper into why Lawson's wines are so renowned. And who better to show me than their senior winemaker, Marcus Wright. Marcus, you are the winemaker at Lawson's Dry Hills and your background is in biochemistry. Oh. Yeah, so I did a 
a biochemistry degree and then couldn't work out what to do so I did another one. Uh-huh. Another biochemistry another, yeah, degree? I did, I did a master's degree. All oh, right. Uh, and then I worked as a scientist for a few years. In research? In research, yeah. And But the, uh, the career path was a little slow and dreary and I liked drinking wine. Uh-huh. I was going to say, yeah, so when did the like, wine So it was like, you know, what happen? am I going to do? Need to use my degree, want to earn some money, like drinking wine, can I? It turned out I could put them all together. And here we are. Yeah. Yeah, so I worked as a seller hand for, for a few years and then went overseas, worked in Chile and worked in France. Oh, cool. And yeah, ended up here 18 years ago. Yeah, you've been here for a little while. Ago. Yeah, mm-hmm. I have. This is our, our estate Sauvignon Blanc. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I think in many ways this is our best wine. Um, and you do something a bit different with your salad. All those Sauvignon Blancs, some of it is fermented in barrel. Yeah, winemakers sort of get the glory and our viticulturists drove in today and then you saw you guys and drove back <laughs> out, you know. Like, um, but really the sites we've got and the work he does is what gives us the sort of identity of the wine. Mm-hmm. In the winery we can mould it and push it in different directions a little bit. You know, you can't push too hard otherwise you, you take away from the essential character of the wine. But one of the things we do do is a little bit of fermentation in barrel with indigenous yeast, so it's mm. the yeast that comes from the vineyard on the outside of the grapes, and it's, it's a slow, gentle fermentation that provides less fruit character to the wine, but more texture. Mm-hmm. This wine has less than 10% barrel fermentation, but it just gives a background sort of weight and texture to the wine. Let's, uh, let's check it out. That passion fruit is you see, you should, you should give it a swirl and then you should kind of, like, if you go, like it about here, smell the passion fruit. Mm. Yeah. And that's a, that's a real signature of Marlborough Sauvignon Blanc. Mm-hmm. We have 25 degrees during the day and 5 degrees at night. Mm-hmm. It's a really big temperature shift. Mm. And that tends to retain acidity and retain flavour in the grapes and, and helps with those aromatics. It and hasn't got that same kind of almost herby kind yeah, of Yeah, there's a real... Burst. We, and you always get that in Marlborough Sauvignon Blanc, mm. but it's a matter of how much. So if you if you pick the grapes early, or depending where you grow them, that, that herbaceous character is more prevalent. Mm-hmm. So with this style, where there's some of that character there, but we're looking for more lemon, lime, mm. passion fruit mm-hmm. character. So, so you pick our, a Our style, later. yeah, and it's at vineyard sites as well mm-hmm. that, that give us this. You know, the character this wine has. Mm. It's still quite passion fruity. Yeah. Mm. And this is a 2019, so mm. the young wine is, is passion fruity. Mm-hmm. It does change over time. We recently opened a 2001. A 2001? 2001 uh, a wine of this label. It was quite developed, it sort of had some honey characters, mm. but lovely depth, lovely acidity, you know, really bright and vibrant. Mm-hmm. Still, Jill. still, <laughs> yeah. When we're looking to harvest the grapes, the most important thing is flavour. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the best wine is unmanipulated, so we pick the grapes, we take it into the winery, it's a very simple process, fermentation, uh, filtration and bottling. Mm-hmm. If we have to manipulate, the grapes, we you know, we, we can change the acidity if we want to. One thing we can never do is add any flavour. You know, the flavour mm. we get comes from the vineyard. So mm. when we're picking, it's maximum passion fruit is what we're looking for. So we're so tasting you kind the grapes. Of wander around. Yeah, yeah, hundred mm-hmm. percent. Yep. So it's tasting the grapes. It's not just wine I get to try here. Sander has started a unique business catering wineries in the region using the wide array of local seasonal produce on offer. Originally from the Netherlands, Sander worked all around Europe before meeting a Kiwi and moving to New Zealand 11 years ago. Sander and his team cook for over 20 wineries, sometimes cooking up to a thousand meals a day to send out to the wineries at vintage time. Someone has to keep all those shift workers fed. Today he's cooking the team at Lawson's a veritable feast of local Marlborough lamb skewers, wild venison sausages and grilled vegetables, and to top it all off, some of the region's famous mussels. I'm going to get stuck into this delicious 
spread that Sander has provided and this delicious glass of rosé. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Whilst filming the Celador New Zealand in the spectacular Marlborough Sounds, our crew chose to stay at the beautiful Portage Hotel. Set amongst a rich landscape of native plants with an abundance of bird life, the Portage is nestled within a private piece of paradise. Relax, unwind and switch off from the rest of the world while you enjoy breathtaking views in this stunning part of the Sounds. To book your stay at the Portage Hotel, head to theportage.co.nz. Hi, Sean. Hi, nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah, you do. So, you're the general manager at Lawson's Dry Hills. That's right. And you've been here for quite a while. Yep. So, <laughs> I hate to quote it, but yeah, it's been, I'm on my 20th year now. Oh, that's pretty good. That's a good run. Yeah, no, I'd love to read my little bit. So, certification of sustainability is mandatory now, but you were among the first. Yeah, so, yeah, so we took the initiative um, while it was voluntary, and that's always been our, our approach. We don't sort of wait for things to, to be required to do it. I mean, it's, it's part of um, you know, ethos, what we do and always has been. So we were one of the first wineries to be sustainably certified. What does that involve exactly? Well, so across everything we do in our business, it's everything from your water to, to your waste, um, and it even now includes people. You know, probably waste management is, is the challenge. And we've been bailing our plastic and, and you know, exposing about glass and, and coal and all these things, you know, for some time. But you know, now the challenge is to see what else we can do. Mm. And we're looking to install some 200 solar panels across the winery building to provide a minimum of 30% of our power needs. So, That's quite a lot. But that's just, yeah, one of many things. I mean, we've always been good in, in recycling, you know, our waste. It's easy to try and probably put a, a number around what we want to achieve at, at a future date, but for us, it's, it's about making inroads every year. Um, Consistent progression. Yeah, mm -hmm. We're one of the lowest users of, of water per litre of wine we produce. So we're already achieving great things, but yeah. we want to keep on striving across our hard tyre business. And we're, and we're very, Loyal to, to locally produce products as well, really the packaging, we don't import any packaging. Some of the grapes are sourced from your personal vineyard, I believe. They are, mm. yeah, yep, yes. So, yeah, we're also contract growers and and uh, my partner Betty, she's, you know, she's moving away from use of pesticides mm -hmm. and she has transformed all, um, our vineyard into sort of under, under vine management and not using pesticides and, and you know, using um, bene beneficial planting. So oh, great. that's a transition period and yeah, and mm -hmm. it's working very well. So we've seen great results from that. Before tasting even more wine, it's time to have a wander in the vineyards. These the vines are very rare. Yeah. So what you've got in your glass is mm -hmm. our Lawson's Dry Hills Gewurztraminer mm -hmm. and it comes from these vines. And this is where the company started. Ross and Barbara Lawson planted these in the early 80s. Because um, it wasn't a, a grape that was grown in the area really. No. And it isn't. Still. No, no, there's a little bit around but not a lot. Mm. They had no idea this would be a good place to grow grapes. <laughs> the nearest vineyard would have been you know, 15 kilometres away. Mm -hmm. They'd never heard of Gewurztraminer, so it was just luck. And then the, the company was selling it to uh, after about 10 years, so they didn't want the grapes anymore. And they thought the grapes tasted pretty nice, so we'll give it a go. And here we are with this. Here, here we are. So, first vintage was 92, um, and we haven't looked back. So, you've made it every year since 92? Yep. But I mean, these are they're just, just such beautiful old vines. Yeah. When you look at how many wines are produced out of Marlborough, it's mm. kind of hard to say, well, why would we choose this wine or why would we choose that wine? The key for us is to try and help people to understand that if they buy a bottle of Lawson's Dry Hills, they are choosing a really great option no matter what the occasion. We planted the first vineyard, which is actually the vineyard around here, around the winery, in 1982. Mm -hmm but the brand wasn't launched until 10 years later. Marcus, our, our winemaker, and Mark, our viticulturalist, and Sean, uh, all came on board roughly around the same time to take the company to where it is now. So we've been here since the beginning, really. I mean, we were one of a handful back then. 
that yeah, were actually here. Yeah, there weren't that many, and no. it's kind of exploded since then. A lot. So for us, it's about our authenticity, our provenance and being here with the hills. Mm. And also it's about our autonomy. We do everything ourselves. We don't outsource to any service providers. And that means that if we make a decision, we can act on that straight away. It gives us that flexibility. And for a number of others, they're kind of in a queue with service providers and things, and, and that limits their flexibilities. We even bottle here, which is kind of crazy for our size because we're not that big, but mm. you know we're responsible for every bit of it, and that's how we like it. One of our other key points is we blend from across the region. Mm -hmm. So our vineyards are right throughout the region, meaning we're not totally reliant on one vineyard. So if anything does go wrong or the weather or whatever, mm. we can blend and it means we're blending to quite a consistent style year in, year out. Mm. And people have that expectation mm. that it's going to taste roughly similar to what they've bought in the past. <laughs> yeah. So we need to adhere to that it's as well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's not just white wine that Lawson's Dry Hills have perfected. Time to taste their Pinot Noir. So Sauvignon Blanc is you know, commercially the most important wine. Mm. It's um, Economically, in terms of the New Zealand wine industry, Marlborough Sauvignon Blanc is key. Yeah. Um, our red wine um, is Pinot Noir. So we're, we're enormously lucky that we grow Sauvignon Blanc like nobody else can and around the world. You know, there's nobody else that can imitate our style or specifically is able to. Specifically Marlborough. So those, those big um, leap out of the glass aromatics really are quite unique to Marlborough. And then our red wine is Pinot Noir, and Pinot Noir is super hard to grow. So there's really only a handful of places around the world that do a good job of growing Pinot Noir. Why and is that? Definitely cool climate. You, ne you need a, a reasonably long ripening period without it being super hot. Mm -hmm. So here is ideal. Basically in New Zealand, anywhere from Martinborough south is, is really good growing conditions. So what's happening in this glass? So this is our reserve Pinot Noir, it's from 2017, which was a lovely year from the Waihopi Valley. So it's, it's about 15 kilometres from the winery inland. It's got lovely clay soils, um, and clay tends to give a, uh, a roundness and a richness to the palate of the wine. So again, like with the Sauvignon Blanc, the, the character is given by the site. Mm -hmm. So the fact, that, the fact that it's further from the sea gives it even greater diurnal temperature variation, mm -hmm. so, so warmer daytime, cooler nighttime. And, and what it, does that do to the fruit? Uh, it seems to be very good in retaining acidity, mm -hmm. and it means we don't get characters that are overripe. So the grapes never get too hot. Mm -hmm. yeah, and they're cooling down every night. To try and like, yeah. get them in the yeah. sun. Yeah, so it, it's a double-edged sword. We, we, we actually need more sun on the grapes to get them ripe. We also, because we're cooler, we can have problems uh, actually getting the grapes ripe enough. Mm -hmm. And we can have problems with um, rain during harvest, which mm. can cause splitting and botrytis. And so the way the way of dealing with that is to have a nice open canopy, so you know around the grapes. So if we do get some rain, it dries easily, and that we get sun on those grapes to get them ripe enough to mm -hmm. pick. The Australian vines are a lot more. Bushy, Broad and bushy, and you're trying, and to, you're trying to get shade. Yeah, Whereas we're the opposite. They're we're, all real trim. Yeah, and we're trying to get sun on the um, on the berries. On the berries. We want generosity in Pinot Noir. It needs to be something that's you know just eminently drinkable. Mm -hmm. it wants to be delicious, mm -hmm. um, and that's drinkable and delicious. Are two of my favourite yeah. wine qualities. Yeah. <laughs> mm. So you got a lot of cherry character. You got a little bit of um, what we call barnyard. So it's kind of a little bit of filthy, is that, you know, a little bit mushroomy. I'm kind never of, sure what to, I've yeah. said gamey before. Yeah, gamey's a good. Yeah. Yep. I like barnyard. And then just really soft mm. and round. And this. It's got a, like quite a savoury kind yep. of finish. Back to it, finish, yep. yeah. I mean, it's 2017, so it was in barrel for 10 months and then it's okay. been in bottle for a couple of years. So. In old barrel or new? No, 25% new. Mm -hmm. Oak actually has a flavour. Mm -hmm. So we leach from what comes out of the barrel is vanilla, coffee, chocolate, spice, mm -hmm. smoky characters, all come out of the oak into the wine. It's not only aromas and flavours, but some, some compounds that give a fat around the mouth feel. Mm -hmm. So add to the generosity of the wine. Mm -hmm. So the newer the barrel, the more of that, of that character mm -hmm. comes in. So we've got a hot mixture here. We've got, there's a 2018 barrel up there. 
This is a 14, this is a 19, so that will have a lot of oak mm. flavour to it. Um, maybe we should taste one of the think, things. Do you think we should? Oh, maybe. It's time for a deep dive into the barrels of Lawson's Dry Hills. So we're going to taste an old barrel and then we're going to taste a new barrel and show you the difference. And it's Chardonnay? Um, no, Pinot Noir. Pinot Noir, great. Pinot Noir. So um, this is from a lovely vineyard. It's, it's nice clay soils. Um, again, it gives that sort of richness to the mid. To so the is that, that richness because they're sort of, they've always got moisture or? Yeah, probably. So the nice thing about clay is it soaks up water when you do get rain mm -hmm. and then slowly releases it over time. Mm. So what you get here is the fruit character. So the oak's kind of integrated yeah, so and this, softened So this is a 2015 barrel, so it was filled in 15, 16, 17, 18, it's on its fifth fill. Mm -hmm. So it's given all the flavour it's mm. got really. Mm -hmm. So now it's just a vessel rather than something that provides oak mm -hmm. character. You definitely get that fruit. And compared to the 17, so the 17's had some time in bottle, so it's had a bit of time to mellow, whereas mm -hmm. this really is fruity. Mm. Mm. So yeah. it's, a, it's a really... It's not a not, sweet fruit. No, no, it's bone dry. Mm. It's, uh, the alcohol's pretty moderate, you know, it's 13.5%. So this is newer oak, so it's got more flavour to give. Yeah, mm. so more flavour to leach out of the wood. Mm -hmm. So we, with the Reserve Pinot Noir, it's 25% new oak. And that just seems to be a nice balance. Um, this year, uh, 2019, because the fruit is really super dense, we will actually um, have slightly more new oak. To kind of stand up to that yeah. density of fruit. Yeah, yeah. So we do a lot of tasting it blind. Mm -hmm. So each vineyard has got, you know, so this vineyard's got hills, it's got flats, it's mm -hmm. got three clones on the hill and three clones on the flat, and then we've got two other vineyards. We end up with 18 different mm -hmm. barrel groups. It's a lot of tasting. It's a lot of tasting. How does, how does that go? What do you, like, cleanse your palate with? Oh, you just, you know, taste for an hour and then, and we've, right. got, we've got other things to do, so. <laughs> you know, You're not we'll, just we'll, sitting around drinking wine We'll do that. an hour of tasting in a day and then we'll be up and we'll come back the next day. Oh, sure. Yeah, or maybe we'll do it morning and then afternoon. Yeah. And of course, this is what, you know, mm -hmm. the bucket's full. Yep. We spit. So away you go. Just watch the away shirt you. market. So away you go. Your turn. It's gone. Sorry. Do a spit. Alright. That wasn't too bad. I got a little bit on my chew. A little bit on your shoe. <laughs> a lot of vanilla character, particularly. Mm. I wouldn't know how to break it down, but uh, yeah, that mm. oak. I get the sort of smoky tobacco. Is I'm getting that. But that that newness will will kind of mellow out. Well, it will be only 25% of the blend. Mm. So we'll blend that with that older barrel you taste, and then there'll be some in between, or some that have been filled. Not only do grapes taste different when they come from different places, but the oak tastes different mm. depending where it comes from in France. And how much it's been toasted. And how much it's been toasted. Mm. So we pick a mixture of oak and they provide Does the complexity. Does that affect the colour? It doesn't... No. But I mean, great colour this year. It is. It's a so lovely it's inky. It's so smoky. <laughs> so we um, actually plant a mixture of wildflowers. Oh, um, is this down big? intermittent rows. Mm -hmm. um, so you mm -hmm. get all sorts of things popping up. And is that um, to... So that's to attract uh, predatory wasps that mm -hmm. feed on some of the bad different bugs. bad bugs. Mm -hmm. You don't have to spray, and, it, and insects size are nasty, so... Yeah. There's no fruit up here at all, it's no. all here. So the fruit is all what we call in the fruit zone, 
So we've had them hand leaf pluck. There's a bit of leaf growing back. Mm -hmm. And then the nets are on to stop the birds mm. from eating them. Mm -hmm. um, so this is pre pre verizon so we will yeah. have a little bit of colour on them. There's a few few berries starting to get a little bit of colour and become soft, which is what we call verizon. Mm -hmm. Here you just have so much ownership. I mean, you know, you stand pride by your product and, and, and it's not just about gold medals and accolades that we achieve, and we certainly achieve more than our you know, share, share of those, but it's, it's how we go about it. And, you know, we're, we're a modest outfit and, you know, and, and our team, there's nothing flash about, about us. And, and it just goes hand in hand with, you know, we want to show pride in what we're doing and how we're doing it. And you know, so we can stand, you know, proud of what we're doing. Is it, it represents us, and you know, hence, the, you know, we've got a team that's been together for such a long time. Mm. We're on the same, all on the same journey. It's <laughs> wonderful. Thank you for sharing part of that journey with me. Lovely. People have often said to me, "Well, what's your desert island wine? What's the one wine that you?" And I said, "I can't answer that because I'd need to have a champagne. I'd need to have a riesling. I'd need to have a Northern Rhone Syrah. I'd need a Pinot Noir from Lawson's Dry Hills. I'd need, you know, <laughs> it's just impossible. You know, how can you love one child more than any other? It's just not possible. Well, thank you for sharing your great love of these delicious wines with my me. My pleasure, my pleasure. Mm. Thank you. Well, I've had a wonderful first day in Marlborough and I can't wait to get back out there tomorrow. But right now I'm kicking back at the Portage with a glass of local wine and their house speciality, a dish of green licked mussels caught just behind me in Marlborough Sounds. Don't forget, if you've missed any episodes, you can catch up online on our YouTube channel and I will see you next time on the Cellar Door New Zealand.